Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. Hey everyone, welcome back. Or if you're this is your first time with us, welcome. We are Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses the things schools may not have prepared you for. Again, I'm AJ and sitting across from me is my friend and co-host Jason. Jason, how's life treating you these days? Can't complain. Busy as ever, but can't complain. Yeah, so to kind of give you some uh, some behind the scenes of us, we are just now date-wise, we're just now in kind of getting started with our summer semester classes. Both of us again teach college, so we're we're still in the midst of the beginning. So it's still it's still fun to us <laughs> right now for this semester, but so to, to kind of give you an idea of what's on today's episode, Today, we're introducing our first series of the podcast, and which I'm super excited about. Like we said before, we're going to break these into series. So it kind of helps you be able to organize and kind of go directly to which one you, you need at the time. Uh, and so our first series is called the Pre-College Series. And we're going to be discussing topics that we feel are important to understand before your college career begins, or if you're already in college, maybe you need to reevaluate. Uh, and today, this being our first episode of the first series, we're going to be trying to answer a somewhat controversial question, especially if you ask most college professors, is college for everyone? Is college a must? So I'm excited to get on with that. Jason? Absolutely. As you might expect, the fact that we're college professors, you would expect that we're going to be proponents of college for everyone. But at least in my case, that's not always the right choice for everyone, depending on what you want to do in life. You're not necessarily told that, early on by your guidance counselors or whoever is giving you whatever level of advice you receive when you're in high school earlier and things like that. So um, I'm pretty interested to hear your point of view on that, AJ, and in comparison to mine. Yeah, I have a pretty interesting upbringing from my, my family family side of it. So it's, it's going to be a pretty good topic today, I think. We're, gonna, we're coming out of the gate shooting hard with these, these topics. It's not, we're, we're not going to go easy on our first episodes, that's for sure. Well, good. Well, before we jump in, I do want to remind our listeners about one thing. Visit our reschooled.com uh, website. You'll see our prior episodes, things like that. Learn more about us, information about the podcast, but also follow us on our social media profiles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have Reschooled Pod is our handle. And if you are a regular podcast listener, whatever platform you use, whether it's Spotify, Apple, Google, we're listed on there. So please uh, smash that like or follow button so that we'll be right there for you when you're ready to hear our next episode. Absolutely. And one thing that we're going to introduce in this episode that we didn't do in the last one is, is each episode, we're going to start with a quick question or some sort of kind of almost opening personal question more about us that kind of directly or indirectly relates to the topic that we're going to be talking about today. And so just to start this one off, so the quick question of the day today is, Jason, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a professional athlete. Naturally. I think a lot of boys, yeah, naturally, <laughs> a lot of boys growing up want to be professional athletes, right? And I was one of them. And I think I kept the dream alive a little bit longer than most, longer than I should have, all the way up until when it was time to go to college. And, and I thought I was going to continue on playing sports and, and that quickly changed. So uh, after that, I had no idea. I said, I'll be a biology major because then you can be a doctor, right? Naturally. And uh, I was first generation. Yeah, <laughs> naturally, right? I'm, I'm first generation going to college. I know nothing about anything. And doctors have, make a lot of money. So I said, okay, well, being a doctor is successful. I mean, what else am I going to go for when I have no understanding of what I want to do in life? And then that quickly changed. And then I said, well, maybe I'll be a lawyer. And ultimately... Got to the end of college, didn't know what I was going to do and said, all right, well, I'll go back to plan A or I suppose plan B at that point. I'll apply to law school. And that's what I did. Went to law school, went to the army, got out of the army, um, went back to business school, went back to law school again for another law degree and then got my teaching job uh, as a professor. So uh, along the way, I tried a few different businesses, still got a few things in the mix, but it's pretty much after after I fell into things and how I, you know, once I identified starting businesses and uh, things like that as being my career path of, of choice, everything felt, kind of fell in line. But early on, particularly during college, I was clueless, beyond clueless. And honestly, the, the advice I got was pretty bad, too. So, yeah. Well, I think I'm going to ask the question I think is everybody's mind right now. And what was the sport of choice? Well, so uh, it was baseball okay. about, you know, college time. A little bit earlier, it was uh, soccer. 
and neither one of them quite worked out the way I had hoped. Yeah, I see, I played soccer since I was five all the way through. I uh, didn't play it in high school because my high school didn't have a team, but I coached it, and then I picked it back up in in college, and then mm-hmm. done after that. So, but I yeah, I love I love sports. I love watching. I love playing it. Uh, getting into my older years, I don't play it near as much. I'm afraid I'm going to break something. Did you have the dream of that was what you're going to do for a living? No, I I think honestly, I think I was I was I was accepting in myself that knowing that I'm not good enough to be a pro. <laughs> So I didn't have that dream. Um, what I wanted, so to, again, going back to what I was uh, in the first episode, if you listen to our intro, I'm very strategic and to the point where, uh, even my trainer, uh, calls me strategically lazy. And that is, uh, I work strategy into it so I don't have to work harder. I can work smarter. And so growing up, my mom would tell me stories of this too, but, uh, I, I wanted to be a trash man, a trash truck driver. Because when I was that young, I thought they worked one day a week. You know, the Tuesday that you pull your trash can down to the, I thought this is the greatest job ever. You work one day a week. And then she realized, she told me that, no, they work all the other days. They just go to other places. I thought, I don't want to do that anymore. (laughs) And so I had the dream to go to, (laughs) I had the dream to go to, 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 uh, med school. So I did two years of pre-med. I went through chemistry instead of biology, but I remember having to take biology. And, uh, once I got into that, I realized, you know what? I don't, I want to have time for a family. And my dad was a professor uh, when I was growing up. He's now the dean of a school of business. Uh, you know, he had time for me and everything. Like I said, I played soccer. So I was always, I was playing club soccer. So we were traveling all the time. And so being able to see him at all of my events and stuff, it, it let me know that he had enough time for a family. And so that had to have been a career that would give me enough time for my family. And it really has. I mean, it's been a blessing. So, but yeah, I wanted to be, I wanted, I was, even at a young age, I was a lazy kid that wanted to work one day a week. So uh, what can <laughs> I, you do? I understand it completely. <laughs> Um, let's get into our main topics now and let's get into hopefully uh, uh, something that we can get, we can help other people, um, figure out. And so the biggest question that, um, I've been posed by some of my students is, is college for everyone? Uh, and that's a loaded question and it can go a lot of different ways. And if you, and if you talk to different generations, the answers can be different. Uh, so let's just start with a single answer. Let's a matter of fact, we'll do it this way. I'm going to say one, two, three, and you say your answer, yes or no. And I'll say my answer, yes or no. And we'll see if we are the same or we're different. So is college for everyone? One, two, three. No. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So caught you off guard a little bit, didn't I? You did. And, and well, I think uh, some would say they caught, uh, you know, my answer caught off guard because as a college professor, most would say that, you know, I'm, I would be selling college to everyone. And I don't think college is for everyone. So this is a great first episode because it's going to show uh, both sides of the coin. So I'm going to let start with you. Why would you say yes? So I'm probably taking a little bit different definition than you. Sure. So is college necessary for everyone? No. Is college going to help everyone in their career path? Maybe not enough to make it worth it. So again, the answer would be no. But is the structure of college being that Generally, people don't realize this, but college doesn't have the objective in most cases. And I'm talking about a four year baccalaureate institution, right? You go and get a four year bachelor's of something is not meant to teach you how to do most things. Most things that you study, you'll learn about. You'll learn the theory behind it. You'll learn the applications of it over uh, historically. You'll learn things about it. You'll learn things that will make you a more well rounded person. I mean, we have that liberal arts model that goes way back from the founding of the country, right? The idea that a more well-rounded person can think more broadly about topics. And that's something that's valuable no matter what you do. Now, if college gets in the way, that is, there's not enough hours in the day, you have a designated career path that you want to follow, college, it may not be worth it. It may not be necessary, at least, for you to pursue what you want to pursue. But is the experience of college, regardless of the format, whether it's in person, online, and they have different benefits, I would say, each one, and resounding negatives, I would say, as well. But is that made for everyone? Well, sure. There are aspects of it that will help you develop as a human being. Like I say, it may not be a skill base you're acquiring. It may be just the ability to think about something more deeply. 
It may be exposure to people who have different points of view than you, things like that. So for that reason, I say yes. College is really made for everyone. But with that being said, I want to hear your reasoning. Why Why is college not right for everyone? Well, that's that's a heck of a uh, explanation you just put down. So I feel like my my explanation only scratches the surface of what you were talking about in that I th- I completely agree with what you said in a vacuum in the sense of if you take out cost, if you take out time, if you take out all that, the stuff that you learn is way valuable, not necessarily, like you said, not necessarily the the academics of the course, but the undertones of the course. There's a lot of other stuff that you learn in an academic class that has nothing to do with the actual academic topic, but it has to do. So for instance, you know, in, in accounting, what I teach, most of my students are not going to be accountants, but what they learn is, is problem solving skills and creative thinking skills, and it, which is probably not the best thing to learn in accounting. You don't want to be creative in accounting because that'll get you to go to jail. But these are the things that are very important. So in a vacuum without the cost and without the time, can, you know, the time restrictions or the time needed to, to go through these classes, I would agree that class is very helpful for everyone. But I guess my answer was coming more from the line of it's not for everyone for the purpose of the the goal, the end goal for their career. Because I grew up, and this is kind of what I was alluding to at the beginning of, of the episode is, you know, my background, uh, my dad comes from a Middle Eastern country. And so, and he came over here, he got his, his uh, bachelor's in his home country. He got his master's, his PhD and his postdoctorate here in the U.S. Uh, and then naturally lived here because that's where I live. Met my mom, got married, had kids, all that good stuff. Beautiful story, white pick and pence, wonderful. But, you know, when you when you have somebody, typically when you have somebody from another country and their kids, the expectation for their kids is you're either going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. That's it. And so it was always kind of pushed to us is that you're going to go to college because it was necessary. And the more and more I realized what they were doing is they knew what I wanted to do. They knew what my end goal was for my life, for my career. And so they weren't pushing me to go to college for the sake of going to college. They were pushing me to achieve my goals and my, my career goals because they knew that's what had to happen. But there are plenty of, of occupations out there that does not require college. Maybe it doesn't require a four-year college. Maybe it just, you know, some certificate or maybe just an apprenticeship. And those are really, really needed right now, especially coming up in the near future, because we're going to be losing a lot of them, too. And so that's kind of why I said that college is not for everyone looking at it from an end goal standpoint. But from the skills, I completely agree. It is something that I think people would greatly benefit from if you in a vacuum with no cost and no time. That's a great point. So just picking up on that, there are a lot of people coming out of high school have no idea what they want to do. But college, you know, I could go out and name the benefits that are there. Everything from networking, career exploitation. Yes, what I've already mentioned about becoming a more well-rounded person who can think more broadly on topics, things like that. But for the most part, if you have no idea what you want to do and you understand that there are these secondary benefits that are only tangentially related to where you're going, College is not a bad idea. College has changed a lot over the years. It's no longer this place of esoteric learning where you really learn everything on your own and then you just go to your professors for a more in-depth understanding. College has largely, and I can say this having taught in the system and been to a lot of colleges, it's very similar to the 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th grade. That's true. That is, the things that you see you're are very mechanized. You're following along a, in a book in every classroom. It's very similar to the way you do in high school. Of course, a little more is expected of you on your own in terms of learning the material outside of class before you come in and things like that. And to a certain extent, there's considerably less hand-holding in that way. So there is more room to fail. But if you can muster the motivation to say, look, I recognize the benefits that are going to come out of this, that it may not move me along in a career I've chosen, but it may help me choose a career. And once I do choose that career, it may help me understand that. It may put me around people who can influence that in a way so I can take the next step and move in that direction. But if that is not your case, there are many situations where college is going to take away time and resources from you that could otherwise be dedicated to other career fields, other professions, particularly 
if you know and understand well the career path that you desire, and college is not a requirement for it, or it doesn't give you any advantages or any obvious advantages as much as it takes away time and resources would create a detriment for you. So there's a notion that goes around. I think it's a, an idea that most people, depending on where your philosophy is with college uh, lies, that you have to graduate college in order to be successful. Do you feel that's a myth or do you feel like there's some kind of truth to that? Incredible myth. Okay. Now, I will say this. People have a perception out there and society's perception will cause them to treat you differently. It will cause people to make assumptions about you. And can that close off opportunities in terms of networking, in terms of getting jobs? Sure it can. So in a way, you are at a disadvantage if you don't align yourself with the perceptions of others if what you're going to do depends upon them for your career advancement. But as far as being successful, everyone defines success on their own. You know, the longest running study in history is that Harvard study on happiness, right? Over 80 years, it actually had a president involved, right? And it separates the ideas of happiness, right, which is more or less a chemical reaction that's fleeting for everyone, no matter how successful or how exciting your life is. And then there's contentment, and contentment comes from a lot of fields. But when it comes to career contentment, in many people, there's no one thing you'll do in life more than work other than sleep. But in your waking hours, work, your profession is what you will do more than any single thing. So that being said, it is a major source of whether you are content as an individual or not. And that level of contentment is going to vary based upon your expectations for yourself, your accomplishments, how others see you, and things of that nature. So can you be rich can you be financially well-to-do without going to college? You most certainly can. Can you do things that fulfill your internal needs, have a career field path that meets your internal needs, which ultimately are, is the combination that is most closely related to contentment? Absolutely. Yes, you can. So with that regard, college is not required. But some people motivate differently. Some people do things. Some people's careers are related almost exclusively to their perception to others, to their socioeconomic status. And I throw in there socio along with economic being how people see you in your class and your status in society as much as the, the wealth that you accrue, right? So depending on how you measure success, what are your metrics? What are your expectations for yourself? If you are influenced by others and others do have a perception about whether college is a requirement or no, then it may be necessary for you mentally to say, yes, this is what success means to me. This is what is going to make me successful. Yeah, I agree. But if it comes down to the more basics, you know, to be wealthy, no. So how about you, AJ? Yeah, I agree with that. And and it is, it is the mentality of what success means to you. I do think, especially now that there is such a high level of focus on finances being related to success. And that's not necessarily the case, but money is king, cash is king. And a lot of times we we look at that kind of stuff. I mean, like I said, I wanted to be a doctor for two reasons. One, I, the idea of helping someone in a medical situation just was awesome. And then the, the more and more I, you know, I got older and I had to go to the doctor, or I got to see doctors helping people, the more and more I wanted to do it. But there was always that side of it going, they make money too. And so that was a, that was a thought of, of why I wanted to go that way. So, you know, I was looking this up. So the 50th percentile median of uh, people, em uh, employees that are workers, that uh, full-time workers, salaries, this was done in 2017. So it's a little, a little old, but it does get the idea, paints the picture. So your uh, average or median, I should say 50 percentile, if you have less than a high school diploma is $515 a week. With a high school diploma, it is $718 a week. So that's roughly a $200 difference right there alone. So $200 per week. Associate's degree is $799, so almost $800. So there's only about $80 difference there. Bachelor's degree is right under $1,200. So now we're, we're at you know roughly $400 difference. And then advanced degrees, so master's, PhDs, whatever, you're looking at right around $1,450 per week. So again, there's another 250 on top of that. So there is difference, differences average-wise 
based on the college degree and what you make. But again, that's not necessarily success. Like to me, my success when I was going through it is I wanted to find a job that was going to allow me to financially support a family, but then also have time for that family. I didn't always want to be working. I didn't always want to be on call. I don't, I, that's not me. Again, I'm strategic, strategically lazy. What can I do to get the most out of something, but not have to do the most work because I want other things. So there's other things to do. Uh, like I said, being able to go to my kids games, whether if they're playing soccer or whatever, and that to me was more successful than making, you know, high six figures or whatever. Sure. So I, I do think there is a, a tad bit of truth to that, depending on what your success is. But I do think in, in its entirety, I think it's a myth. One thing I'll add there, you, you brought up some really interesting statistics there about, you know, and that's the average of all positions yeah. taken across. If you're an employee in a position without a high school education versus with an associate's degree, with a four year degree, with a master's or higher level degree. One thing that is lurking there is many of your highest paying jobs are only available to people with a college degree or with a master's degree. So you're going to see a financial skew there without question, right? But that's also identifying employees. And early on, hourly wage for, say, manual labor or non-technically proficient workers is going to be lower without a high school degree. But all of a sudden, once you develop the technical proficiency that comes with many jobs, HVAC, plumbing, welding, electrical work, things of that nature, particularly in areas of sales, right? Once you acquire some degree of proficiency there, Oftentimes, you no longer are an employee. You'll move on and uh, begin uh, undertaking entrepreneurial efforts in that way. And that's why you see many people who are highly successful, who run businesses where they are also a service provider of value, right? They have their own plumbing business. They have their own uh, HVAC business or electrical business. And financially, you can make a lot of money at that. But those business owners who make money collectively through the efforts of others aren't incorporated in there. If you look at the entrepreneurship rate among um, people without a high school uh, degree versus with a high school degree and with a college degree, you'll see a higher degree of people starting what I call lifestyle businesses, not startup ventures that are growth based and going to sell themselves for some multiple of revenue in the future, but stable businesses that are going to support a lifestyle. They do extremely well. And these individuals tend to become pillars in the community and things like that. So if you take away just the pure financial numbers of what it means to be an employee and to start off at an entry level of working in something, and incorporate what it means to then take the next step to run your own business, to do that yourself, you probably won't see quite as much disparity between someone who remains an employee as a professional service provider, such as an accountant or marketer or a finance person, unless, once again, they either open their own business or they make their way up through the organization. Sure. Okay. And there's always a, a time premium associated with that. There's more responsibility. So once again, it, it has to come back to what you want out of life. Yeah. And if it comes down back to our original question of does college matter? Is it for everyone? Certainly not for everyone if you know what you want to do. Yeah. And college is not a requirement and doesn't give you a huge boost there, right? It can actually take away because it, it usurps more of your time. But if that's not the case, right, if you do have the time, if you do have the energy, if you do have the resources to do that and to continue pursuing what you're going to do, I say, yes, the college college career is valuable. Um, I wouldn't focus as much on the numbers as far as being an employee in a given fear, career field unless you are choosing a career field that and your choice is strongly motivated by those numbers. 
rather than personal contentment or what you want your life to be like. Cool. Well, and I think too, and this, uh, this will lead, like I said, this is, allows us to open many doors, uh, into, you know, future episodes. And I know one of them is coming up is going to be dealing with the finances of college and, you know, it, it being expensive and stuff. So uh, you're, you, we are still teetering on that. We do have very short amount of time, but I want to get to this last one because I think it'll help out our listeners too. Uh, so if we can, if we can give a few, few, uh, quick answers here, but uh, what is some advice for high school students or current college students that may help them make the best decision about if college is, is for them or if, if they need to be going to college or whatnot? My number one recommendation is talking to people who do different jobs. If you can identify, there's so much information out there on the Internet now on anything you could particularly you could potentially, excuse me, uh, go into as a career. Learn about what a career path or or it looks like in a given field. Then identify somebody who works in that field and talk to them. Ask about what it took them to get there and what are their aspirations and what it will take to get where they want to go. What do they do on a daily basis? What is their life like? If you understand those things, then you can make an informed decision about what you want to do with your life. And that's going to be the number one decision maker as to whether you need to go to college, whether you need to go to graduate school, technical school, whether you need to put in the work effort and college on the side is a feasible type thing. So for me, that's the best advice I can give. Do the work to make the decision first. Yeah, I agree. And and I think my my best advice would be find your passion because typically – what you're passionate, you're more likely to focus on, you're more likely to be uh, more involved in, and you're more likely to make, if it's part of your career, you're more likely to make more money from it. So if you're passionate about something, like for me, I'm, I'm passionate, I'm more passionate about being in front of people than I am sitting behind a desk. So I'm going to have a whole lot more fun being in front of people, being in front of a class, which means it's going to propel me in my career. Uh, so it, there's more likelihood I'm going to make more money from it. And so that's why I went to that, that area. And now knowing what my passion is, now I can kind of work backwards to say, in order for me to get to this point, this is what I have to do. I have to go to college or I have to get a master's or PhD or whatnot. So that would probably be mine is to find your passion. Um, and that's actually something I've, I've learned is pretty hard for some people to do. Um, but that'll, that'll do it for today's Agreed. episode. Um, I'm excited. On next week's episode, we're going to be talking more in depth about the different types of colleges. Uh, so we hope you join us for that. Uh, as always, please, please, please be sure to drop us a line on our website. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, Jason, you have anything to say before we leave? No, nope. just want to say thank you all for listening. And like I say, get some questions to us. We'd love to talk about them. Awesome. Well, y'all have a wonderful one and we'll see you later on. Goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into.